Hello students, good morning and namaste. As you know that the whole world is in a fear, in a dilemma. There is a huge chaos relating the coronavirus or COVID-19. I suggest all of you to stay home, stay healthy, stay safe and let us consume this time for productive activities because this is nothing, this holiday is not for fun. And as you know that the UGC has given order to work from home. I'll see that the portions are completed, but I'll also see that you understand everything. And in case of any clarification, any doubts, please feel free to ask in the classroom, the virtual classroom that is created. I'll send the link of every classes to the respective classes so please feel free to ask and you can even give suggestions for further classes okay so we have already completed the first unit in the previous class and now we are going to move on with the second unit that is e-business infrastructure as you all know that to develop a e-business or e-commerce application it will involve various parameters in connection to infrastructure so the infrastructure includes hardware software content bandwidth security and third-party applications so before we discuss about web server software and hardware let us understand the basic concepts of how does this e-commerce or electronic commerce work just like the traditional commerce, even e-commerce has the same thing that is buying and selling of goods and services for a price. When we speak about the traditional commerce, it is restricted to time, place, etc. But in electronic commerce or e-commerce, there is no restriction toward time. So it can be done globally 24 hours a day and 7 days a week. And here the payment can be done using debit card, credit card or internet banking. Now let us discuss the basic process of, of how e-commerce. Alright, so in the first step, a consumer visits the website and uses the online store to make a purchase. A consumer selects the product to be purchased and enters the credit card information or the payment information. The transaction is conducted over a secure connection to web hosting server. In the second step, the payment processing gateway handles the secure real-time encrypted credit card information and coordinates the transaction. In step 3, the merchant bank processes the movement of funds and in step 4, the funds are debited from the consumer's credit card account and in this fifth step, that is the last step, the funds are deposited into the merchant bank account. Once the process is completed, the response will be sent to the consumer. The delivery of the goods will be initiated from merchant. Alright, we will move on to the next topic that is infrastructure requirements for e-commerce. Now, what are the infrastructures that are required for e-commerce? So, the first one would be telecommunication infrastructure requirements this is all about bandwidth and security now you might have come across the word bandwidth bandwidth is the amount of traffic that passes between the website and other computers connected to the internet so what uses this bandwidth users visiting the website uses bandwidth so if the number of users are more Definitely you may require a higher bandwidth usage and the next one the page views per each separate users So the further that people go into website or the more pages they view drives bandwidth usage up The size of images used throughout the page also requires bandwidth and videos when we speak about videos, videos consume a higher amount of bandwidth as it has more information. The second infrastructure is hardware requirements for e-commerce. Hardware requirements for high tech traffic sites may be dependent on the following issues that is the number of transactions per second, number of hits per second, 
number of queries per second, number of queries done by database per second, number of pages served per second. Some other factors that need to be considered when setting up a high traffic e-commerce site includes clustering, that is use of backup servers which automatically takes over operation in case of failure of primary ones. Low traffic sites can be easily served from a single machine depending on the needs of the business. The desktop computers which we use at home can serve hundreds of unique customers each day. The third requirement that is infrastructure requirement are software requirements. Several software are available free on the internet that can be used to build e-commerce applications. Some examples are Apache Web Server, Linux Operating System, MySQL Database, etc. Many of these open source software may not be adequate for high traffic sites. The selection of software depends whether it is high traffic or low traffic site. The next infrastructure requirement is technical skill. A system administrator must have a good knowledge of computer hardware. He must be able to maintain and upgrade hardware including hard drive, processor and motherboard. He or she must also have the skill to install the software and applications. A developer needs to be a high level programmer with a few years of experience in the industry and must possess a clear understanding of how an e-commerce system works. The last infrastructure would be the financial infrastructure. Payment procedures are the ways in which a seller can receive payment in return for the goods or services sold. Access to these services depends on the banking infrastructure in the location of selling and customer's location.